everyone, and welcome back to the Masters Quartet YouTube channel. So today, we're gonna make part two of traveling with the Masters. Now, if your church or event group needs a great group to come sing, definitely check out the Masters Quartet. Now, I got a phone call from Cody and said, hey, Jeremy, let's do another video where you ask some questions. And I said, sure. So we're gonna hopefully do a round table discussion later on in this um, video. So right now, let's load up and let's get going. Oh yeah, that would be. He probably can't get camera to see him. Oh no. Well, hey there. Hey, I want to say thank you for allowing me to go with y'all again and uh, make this video. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to have you with us, Jeremy. Yeah. We've been friends a long time. Always good to see you. Yeah. Now, here's the favorite part of uh, the group, right? Yes, Unloading sir. the equipment. Yeah, watching them young people tote this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, well, you know that don't happen. So. <laughs> All right. Now we've got Denise here, the brains of the operation. <laughs> and uh, so, Denise, real quick, how is it Tell us what it's like to travel with your husband and your son, and now this little one. Well, it's eventful. Let's just say that. Eventful. <laughs> eventful. <laughs> it has been a blessing. It has been a blessing, but uh, we don't get a break from each other. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get the mic. I know. Can I say hey? Uh, hey. Okay, we'll think about that. Yeah. So when, when did you first get the call that Don said, uh, I, I need you to sing? Well, I had filled in some yes. <clears throat> along the way, and um, they were going to do uh, tryouts one more time. They were going to do tryouts, and um, he said, are you sure you're not ready to sing? And I said, well, honestly, when the Lord wouldn't, when the Lord wouldn't uh, let me sleep, and he yeah. kind of said, Denise, it's time. That so, is awesome. Uh, yeah, that's when, that's when I finally told him. I guess we'll give it a try. If give it think, a try. If you think you want to sing with me, but well, all right. Well, we've got plenty of questions, and we'll get yes. to them later. And uh, thank you so much, Denise. Thank you. Hi, Jamie. Will you me grab? Don't matter. <laughs> it don't matter. Whatever. <laughs> Hello. 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 Cody, you're the only one that really unloads everything, right? Oh yeah, for sure, the only one. <laughs> Nobody else helps. So we have got Kirk Chapman right here. So Kirk, what would you like to tell your millions and millions of fans? Roll Tide. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, we'll definitely have to edit that video. <laughs> So we got Donald Talent. Donald, tell us how people can get a hold of the uh, Masters Quartet. Well, they can give us a call, Jeremy, at our phone number, 662-720-2069. 
Uh, of course, uh, they can uh, go to our website and leave us a message there at themastersqt.com. Then on social media platforms, on Facebook, or Messenger, um, also on Instagram, they can uh, reach us there. And also, Cody does uh, a YouTube channel, and I don't know how that works, if they can reach us through that, but they can go there and, and see our music and, and stuff like that. Exactly. I, I don't think we covered that the last time we'd done this video, so I just wanted to make sure we get that in there. Uh, of course, like I said in the beginning, that any church that wants to get a hold of you, any group, mm -hmm. uh, event, y'all right. are just ready to travel. We're ready to go. Lord has opened a lot of doors for us, and uh, we, ha uh, you know, we the people call us. We don't get on the phone and call them. If uh, they want us to come, we'd love to come. And just give us a call, and we'll try to work, uh, work a schedule out that uh, works for both of us. And while we've got you here, Donald, I have asked Denise this question earlier, and uh, but I want to get your take on it. So what's it like traveling with your wife and your son? It's, it's uh, uh, actually both sons now. Yes. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a joy to, to travel with your family, and uh, um, it's hard sometimes leaving them. I've done that before, you know, go out singing, and they'd be at home, and that type of thing, but uh, you know, she's uh, of course part of the quartet for the last uh, uh, going on 11 years now. So it's uh, almost a distant memory of the times that uh, she didn't get to go. But uh, so anyway, it's it's a joy to get to travel with them. And Jamie's handling the sound for us now, doing a great job with that. And of course now, little man, we all kind of watch after him. And and uh, so yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. Now I was asking Denise. Uh, now she filled in, right? Before you actually asked her to uh, be part of right. it, right? Right. Well, we tried to get her to sing before, but Jamie was younger, and back then she felt like she needed to be out in the audience with him in case he needed anything. And but um, Emma, which is um, uh, Cody's fiance, uh, she uh, helps with him so much that uh, it just makes it a lot easier when. Uh, we're up there singing and she takes real good care of him uh, the little little fella while while we were up there singing and Jamie's running sound so it's it's all worked out God's always got uh, got a plan so we are we're thankful for it that is awesome now speaking of of you guys traveling do you have a certain mileage that you want to go or stay local stay within a reasonable well we we've, we've been several places I guess far out is a uh, Dallas Fort Worth and then up to uh, Bruce Wisconsin which is I think about 75 miles from the Canadian border and then in, that's as far west as we've been and then of course we've been just about all up to the eastern coast up up as far as Pennsylvania Indiana Pennsylvania that area up there we don't do as much of that anymore as we used to uh, I don't know if it's because uh, uh, age is, uh, but we basically stay in the south southeast uh, area. But we still travel to other states and sing wherever the Lord opens up the door. So we'll just uh, when folks call, we look at it and and if we can work things out, we will. And uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's 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 good time. Like I said, we do a lot here, of course, in Mississippi and then Alabama, Tennessee, Georgia area, and uh, uh, still make a trip wherever wherever the doors open. I guess we'd say we we would make it work all right thank you donald now we're looking forward to a great uh singing here tonight right. and, and again thank you so much for allowing me to go with sure. you and and do yeah. this uh video for yeah. youtube and uh, we just wanted to kind of scratch the surface sure for some of these uh questions but later on we're going to have uh, like a round table and, uh, hopefully share some more funny stories right well and we appreciate you coming and appreciate cody paying you and everything so that's exactly <laughs> Laughs are from the back there. Yeah, I, I guess so, but he's one inside you, right? Yeah. So he's got to pay you, right? Exactly. Okay, good deal. Thanks, Cody. All right. Thank you, Donald. <laughs>
So we've got some of the Masters uh, Quartet members in here. Uh, there's Cody, uh, Jamie, Don, and uh, Denise. Yes. So we're always waiting on Kurt. <coughs> so that's going to be a little bit. So, <laughs> so we're going to just get started. And let me just ask Don, uh, tell us the first meeting with the original group <laughs> when you got the call to try out. Uh, uh, actually, I was working at a part-time uh, TV station and then went to a singer to film some of the groups that was going to be there, the Masters was one of the group. So as I was working, uh, they approached me uh, about to come in and try it out with them and singing. Uh, their baritone singer at the time had mentioned that he may be leaving, and then a few weeks later he did leave. And so they called me, and I went and tried out with them, and uh, I've been here for 30 years. Wow. Yeah. Well, in that time, uh, of course, members have come and gone. Right. And then how hard is it to find someone to sing? Well, it used to, you know, used to be a little bit of a task. But I, the last few times, the Lord's just like <coughs> sent people, and we didn't even have tryouts or anything. I mean, yeah. He just sent folks in our life. For instance, like Cody. Yeah. You know, we were helping Cody get his name out because he was wanting to sing in a group. We we didn't even know we would be looking for anyone. And uh, he uh, actually came to a quartet of quartets and sing with us. We had him sing three or four songs, just solo stuff. And, and then the next week, uh, we found out that we were going to be looking for somebody. So we already knew who it was, and uh, we didn't have uh, any tryouts or anything. And it's happened that way a few times. I know you and I had talked a little bit there on the RV. But I forgot to ask you, uh, how many dates does the Masters do within a year? Honestly, I, I don't know, uh, Jeremy. <clears throat> it's, this has been our busiest year since COVID. Of course, COVID slowed everything down, shut down a lot of things. We were probably uh, averaging around 130 a year before COVID, so we're probably going to be back close to that this year. Now I'm just going to kind of throw some questions out, and uh, if you want to answer, just grab the microphone. <clears throat> uh, the first one is, do you play an instrument? If not, what would you like to play? Anybody? I do not, but I would like to play the piano. Piano. I can play a little bit by ear if I play with it, but... But now he, but <clears throat> he does, he, he don't pick guitar, but he picks his nose, so he does good at that. <laughs> Stop. If you want to count that. Anybody else want to answer that? I don't, but I would like to play the saxophone. Hey. Tenor sax, to be exact. <laughs> well, you can play the bass guitar. Well, yeah, I can play the bass, but I want to play the saxophone. <clears throat> Like okay. that'd be pretty cool. Hey, I, can you play anything? I cannot. Flute. I never. Can. Oh, I did play the flute in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I never have asked you any of that. Before. Yeah, no. I never knew you played anything. Yeah, I did in, in the band. So the next one is who influenced you to start singing at a young age? Who influenced you? Well, for, for me personally, my grandmother kept us, me and my two sisters, when we were small, and she would order song books off of the radio. Of course, back then, everybody listened to the radio. There was a certain preacher, I can't remember his name. right. Well, actually, it was Brother Oliver B. Mills uh, out of Red Bay, Alabama, and he had the uh, 10-acre field there. So she would order his song books and then teach us the songs out of the song books. And uh, that's what my first musical influence. But as far as the group, um, Peanut McCormick there at Sarepta got me to sing in his choir, and then uh, then a group heard me from that, and uh, that was the first group. But uh, so I'd say my grandmother, uh, grand Mama Burt, and yeah. uh, then Peanut McCormick. Oh, that's awesome. I would say my mother. She always sang in church, <coughs> and so she taught us in when we were children's choir in church. So I would say my mom. Um, I don't really know exactly how I got started singing, but I know I was like two years old. 
and I would sing "He Set Me Free in the Shower." So that's all. That's all I remember. <laughs> That's all I ever remember being told. But uh, anyway, I quit singing whenever my voice started changing. I quit singing for a long time. And then we started going back to Pleasantdale, the church I go to, and Jimmy Kidd got me back to singing. And he begged me and begged me, and I would never do it. And then finally, one day, he, like, literally dragged me into the sanctuary and made me practice after church one Sunday. Nobody really influenced me. It was just, I've been here, I always tell people I've been here 19 years. In nine months. There you and go. So I've just grown up in it and learned it, and that's about it. Well, we finally got Kurt out of the dining room back there. So the question was, Kurt, who influenced you to sing? <clears throat> Growing up or? Well, actually, I started singing when I was four um, in church, and my dad's family had the singing Chapman family. And my uncle sang bass, my dad sang lead, aunts sang the, the harmonizi- harmonizing parts. Harmonizing, that's a big word. Um, <clears throat> and so I just grew up in it. I mean, I, <laughs> I fell asleep many times at concerts, and it's just what the Chapman family did. So, Kirk, how did they uh, come up with that name for the group? <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell, he is not the smartest, <laughs> but he is a nice owner, just not the smartest one. <laughs> now, let me throw this in probably back at Don. <clears throat> uh, picking songs for a new project, do you usually uh, pick uh, original songs or, or older songs, you know, hymnals? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the next part is, how many studio projects has the group done? Ooh. Um, well, as far as the song goes, we do try to look for original. Mm-hmm. Um, but the last few times, we've had a couple of, like, Kurt, like, uh, he pilots my ship. We sing that tonight. Uh, when he reached out his hand for me, some older ones like that uh, that he had brought back. But we do have a uh, good many original songs yes. that we try to record. Writers will send us songs. As far as the projects uh, that we've recorded, Jeremy, I honestly have lost count. To be honest with oh, wow. you, it's been several because there's several years that we made one every year. Mm-hmm. So uh, I would have to go back and get you a number on that. I, I don't really know right off the top of my head. Well, the next one, just keep that microphone. Um, what song, and I think you've probably done it tonight, uh, that the group still does today that the old guys done back then? Okay. Uh, well, actually, a lot of folks think that uh, we recorded someday with the original group, but we did not. Oh. We did not record it till after they had retired, and uh, Miss Belma Garvin there in Boonville had asked us to record that song. And uh, she had talked to them about it, but for whatever reason, it never did get put on a project. Mm-hmm. Uh, but back then, we were doing on several of those projects. Back then, it was all original songs. Right. But uh, that has definitely been our most requested, not because I sing it, but it's been our most requested song. And uh, But uh, that's how that came about. Probably a, a song, one song that we do now that we did with the with the original group was Winging My Way Back Home. We still sing that. Yes. Uh, Kirk does a song from time to time called After a While. Uh, Joe Gann, our original bass singer, he used to sing that as well. When he reached out his hand for me, was on the very first project that the original guys did way before I started singing with them. So there's still a few that we do that they, they did back then. Well, let me before we go much further and uh, before we re- get real deep into the subject, what about some good, funny road stories? I mean, I know this group has got them because I've heard a lot of them. Well, one was last Sunday, actually, so uh, <laughs> I'll let Cody tell you about that one. All right. Cody, um, Cody will tell us a little bit, <clears throat> No, I'm going to tell you what happened. And, then, <laughs> at, and when I get done telling you, Jeremy is going to have the video gonna, ready to play, so you're going to see right. exactly what – you're going to see that exactly what I say is the truth, okay? So, I can't listen to what this old man back here says. So, so we were singing, and, uh, you know, there was this little girl, and she comes on stage, and she wants to sing beside Kirk. So, uh, you know, uh, Kirk had the bright idea to get down on his knees and start singing, you know, with the little girl. And, well, after the song was over, Donald was going to turn it around. Well, Kirk decides he's going to get back up. And so... You know, Kirk is not capable of doing so. so. 
<laughs> so he looks over, and I'm not paying no attention, and he goes, somebody help me up, somebody help me up. And Miss Denise is like, help him. I was like, okay. So I reach down, I grab him, and I'm starting to sing, which I only got one arm under him. And then he starts to get up. Well, instead of leaning towards me or leaning straight up to help me, he goes the other way. So uh, we go the opposite direction, and I almost we almost crushed that about – She's the little girl is probably like twenty pounds. If uh, if we'd have went on over, that little girl would be in heaven today. So, so uh, now we'll let Kirk tell you that version of the story if he wants to. Now for the truth. <laughs> He's gonna, you're gonna play the video now. Uh, so. See, uh, unlike what Cody said, everything was fine. What he said, except whenever he started to um, pick me up, he didn't realize he was picking up a grown man. <laughs> He thought he was picking up a child. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I <laughs> and and whenever he started to pick me up, he didn't have enough strength to help me. <laughs> and he wasn't planted well enough. If you notice, his feet started sliding in the video. After you landed. <laughs> and then. And then he said, I'm going to put this on Facebook. This will be a good blooper tape. I said, no, it won't. Kirk started whining. So I, didn't. <laughs> I didn't whine. I just said, nope. <laughs> well, go time. ahead and keep the, no. keep the microphone, Kirk. Uh, let me just ask you this, and, and you, we can go around, but uh, when a church books the Masters Quartet, what are they getting mm. out of singing? They're getting somebody who will come in mm-hmm. and – present them with the gospel and the presence of Christ. There you go. Um, yeah, we can come in, we'll have a good time, we'll sing some songs, but the most important thing is bringing Christ in so whenever they leave, they're not the same as they were when they came in. There you go. That is a good one right there. That's a good one. I don't think we can add anything else to that. Absolutely not. Well, getting back onto the little lighter side, and I know Cody and I had just talked about this, has there ever been a moment you just didn't feel like singing? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, there's, there's times, I think, um, when, you just get, when, the, when you just get tired, I guess, but then the Lord kind of, he always helps you, and those are some of the best services. As well. Oh, yes. You don't, you don't know if you can or you physically are just so exhausted, but the Lord just shows up and he really just blesses us every time. That's right. I think, uh, too, would add to what she said. Of course, her and Jamie and myself has took, took this little man here to help him in his life. And uh, so sometimes it gets hectic. Mm-hmm. And uh, But then we remember that uh, the way that we have to take care of him is the way we – do with uh, Kirk and Cody, so it's really not a whole lot of difference. Oh, well, so. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> no need. No need. It's, uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> the things I get myself into. Um, how about uh, this one? Highlights of the group, past or present, you know, that uh, maybe it's some kind of like a great honor that you got to sing at. Okay. Well, one of the things that we got to do uh, on one of our recordings uh, was um, we, the producer, Les Butler, uh, called us after we had recorded the, the CD, and he said, I went back and redid one of your songs, and on the second verse of, uh, of uh, If God Doesn't Bless America, we, we brought in a guest singer, and, uh, and we didn't know actually how he did it, but he brought Larry Gatlin of the Gatlin oh. Brothers. And then uh, they wanted some pictures made, so we actually went and sang it on the event in Louisville, Kentucky. <clears throat> Larry was there. We got to meet him and have our pictures and stuff made with him. So that's that a pretty unique honor. But now, as far as just a group in a whole, uh, there was one year, I think Kirk decided to keep a record, and we had over 300 and something people saved. Uh, I forgot the exact number of, of the singing. So to me, that means more than any, anything else oh, that... Yes. Uh, that we do well that kind of went right into my next question was a fondest memory in a recording studio so yeah basically that was pretty good too there but uh now back on the (laughs) most serious side of everything who is the most serious in the group oh that's me oh well kirk's got his hand up (laughs) cody you act Mm. 
So we all. I mean, pick. I would say Cayman, but Cayman ain't here, so. Cayman probably would be the most. Cayman, yeah. Serious. He's the most reserved. Yeah. But as far as this, it's this her. Yeah. But you know me, I'm reserved all the time. Well, I, I'm waiting to really get an answer on this one. Who is most likely to get in trouble? Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> so you don't want to. So it's price. Add, <laughs> you don't want to add to anything on that? No need. No need. <laughs> for itself. <laughs> All right, how about this one? We might could talk, uh, pass the mic around on this one. Uh, is there, what groups, quartets do you listen to? I listen to Gold City, the new Gold City with mm -hmm. Jeff Chapman and Chris Jenkins and all the, those guys. They, they rocking it. So that's who I listen to. Uh, I'd say Gold City and Inspirations. Uh, I know there's more that I'm missing. Got to be, but. Gold City, old and the new, mm -hmm. with Tim Riley. Um, and the King of Mayors when Jeff was there. Um, the old inspirations. And I listened some to JD also. We can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, I liked the a prior version of the Kingdom Airs and the McCamies were always, they're just good friends of ours. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I don't know why I can't think of any right now. And I listen to Leonard Skinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did, I did find out, Donald, you may correct me if I'm wrong, but you do like the song Rocky Top. No, I no, do no, like no. Rocky Top, yes. No, Kurt, Kurt really, really enjoyed it last night at, at an event we were at. But no, I, I, I look, I've always been an Inspirations fan, and McCamey, of course, when they were singing in Primitive Quartet. And, uh, but I like anybody that's, it's, that sings good. It's good music. I like it. So. I know you and I were discussing, and you actually said something from the stage, Don, that uh, talk about the ones, the members that have passed. Mm -hmm. I know you've got several. Yeah. Well, the original guys, uh, Joe, yeah. Joe, Joe Gann, Joe Vernon Johnson, and Terry Scott was all three original members. They all have passed away within the last six years. And, uh, and then we've had some others that has been members of the group down through the years that have passed away as well. So. Wow. And, uh, and let me just, all right, let me get to, the, uh, probably my last question for the evening. So okay. thanks y'all for, for yeah, doing this. You. This has been a blast. Favorite Bible verse okay. that y'all want to go might around? Have. Yeah, be fine. Right. Mine is uh, Romans eight twenty eight for all things work together for good. To them that love the Lord, those are called according to his purpose. And uh, they didn't say that everything's going to be a bed of roses, but, but we do can, we can take the situations in life, good, bad, ugly, and uh, it'll, God can work that for his purpose, and uh, I'm thankful for that. Amen. Well, um, one of mine is Hebrews 4.16. It says to um, come boldly to the throne of grace to receive help in time of need. Awesome. Uh, I was telling this, them this earlier. I don't. There's so many good ones, but we've been learning in Sunday school uh, in John chapter six, and uh, about how the Lord is the bread of life. And uh, in verse 48, it's, he says, "I am the bread of life," and none of the people knew what he was talking about, and they they were all confused and stuff. But as long as you got Him, you'll never hunger and you'll never thirst. So that's, right. that's all you need. Mine would be Luke one thirty seven, and it says, "For with God nothing shall be impossible." And so that's my that's my go to there. Mine has always been Revelation, the whole chapter, chapter five, where it starts talking about who is worthy to unlock the books, who is worthy to take care of the things that need to be taken care of, and there's only one person. And that is the Lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Uh, again, thank you guys thank for you. sticking around and doing this little, little interview. I have absolutely enjoyed the ride coming down here. Always have a blast coming with you guys. It's, it's never a dull moment. <laughs> And uh, again, if anybody wants to go ahead and say, how does anyone get in touch with this group on uh, how to book, uh, contact, and phone number, email? Uh, yeah, they can just give us a call, 662-720-2069. Uh, uh, of course, they can go to our webpage, which is themastersqt.com. And then we're on social media platforms, Facebook, um, Instagram. Instagram and then YouTube, where YouTube. I think this will be there. So <laughs> that's why he stays in trouble. Okay. So he's. I know you said he's most likely to get in trouble. Is he most likely to go to jail? Uh, no, he's not that bad. He's not that no. bad. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank and plus Denise, <laughs> plus Denise, plus Denise, plus Denise would go get him. So. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys, and we have enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Tell us all about it right here. Who is folding the cords wrong? Cody. Cody, Cody is folding, folding, the, folding the cords wrong. And experience means I've got 19 years and nine months of experience. <laughs> Mama was rolling up cords with me in her tummy. <laughs> I know it's in my blood. Time and experience mean everything on certain things. And everybody buy. It is on rolling up cords. And if something don't sound right, they're going to blame you. That's right. That's it. <laughs> But if everything sounds right, you no one ever talk to me. Let me ask you this. Has there ever been a night where they went, Jamie, everything sounded so good? Not really. <laughs> they don't ever say nothing to me. A couple of times they will. Especially if it's like more than one group and I've got to be doing it all night. They'll say good job and whatnot. Other than that, I don't get any recognition. None. Except for the bass singer, because they like how I run it. <laughs>